Edge. To purchase these items, please write, making checks payable to the Educational Television Company at PO Box 100, Warwick, CV 34 6TZ. For further information, call 0926 433333. Look at the differences between this heron, powerful and graceful in flight, and one found dead near a school field. It's a beautiful bird, isn't it? If this light it's... gun glue in them, that beak is going to stick. You yeah. can't open the beak because once an animal dies, it becomes very stiff. After a few hours, its muscles and its skin What's become very there? firm. Is it That's where it was breathing. And of course, now that it's dead, it's stop breathing. And the beak wouldn't be sealed up. Fly. You're right, his beak wouldn't be sealed up so that he could eat frogs and toads and newts. If I put my hand on here, do you think I'd be able to feel a heart beating? No. no. William, how can you tell that that heron's not just sleeping? His heart would be beating very fast and um, he would just be breathing. Yeah, because the body would not come out. It would just go out and in if yeah. they're breathing. That's right. Yeah. And there's no movement at all. No. When an animal dies, it can't move. It has to be flying. It can't breathe. The life of this bird is just completely all gone. Because we always sleep, if, even if we're asleep. When we put oh. that heron into the soil... It'll just go soft and it will rot away, but part of the heron will be left. After they've finished examining the bird, it's important that the children wash their hands in disinfectant. We lift that very carefully and then very, very gently lower it right down into the hole. Because the heron's been brought into school, the children are burying it. We really need to put all that earth back where it came from. Animals that die in the wild aren't buried. Their bodies rot away and provide food for other animals. I think Shoda's doing a really good job. What would happen if nothing ever died? living things die. Nothing can live forever.
Even the gigantic sequoia tree, which lives for over 2,000 years, eventually dies. The length of time that something lives is called its lifespan. Some trees have very long lifespans, but the tiny shrew has a very short one. It only lives for about nine months. Cats usually live for about 12 to 15 years, and dogs have a similar lifespan. Elephants live much longer. Their life spans about 70 years. And the giant tortoise can live to be over 200. But not everything lives out its full lifespan. Some animals die or are killed while still young. Sometimes they die as a result of an accident. A lot of animals are killed for food. Some become ill and die. Some humans also die when they're young. This mulberry tree was planted in memory of Gareth Jones, who died just before his sixth birthday. Each year, children at the school he attended circle the tree and sing. As a baby, Gareth was happy and lively, but later he became seriously ill. Even though he died in 1981, people at the school still remember Gareth and talk about him and the children have told his story in their drawings. He was very game. He never gave up. He never stood back and said, I can't do that. He always tried to do what everybody else was doing. He put on a brave face. You couldn't tell that he was uh, afraid of the disease or whatever he had. He loved maths. He liked doing all the counting work. But uh, he wasn't a little angel not an angel at all. But Gareth was a perfectly normal boy who happened to be ill. He liked playing on the logs a lot. He liked climbing over them just like all the other children. And he didn't want to be left out because he thought it was great fun. His dad used to take him everywhere. And after the treatments, they would explore London together. He had a special pushchair. I think they enjoyed that. That was a chance for them to be very close. Gareth was buried in our local churchyard. People were sad, but it was a thing that everybody shared and talked about. And then there was the planting of the tree and watching the trees grow and seeing that they were healthy. And the plaque underneath, you know, I come over here with my dog when I do my evening walk round. And I, you see the plaque there and you can always remember him. So it became a positive thing rather than an end, it was a beginning. It's unusual for children to die at such a young age. Given good health and good fortune, most humans can live on into old age. Like other living things, they can't live forever. And when they die, something has to be done with their bodies. Some are buried in cemeteries. The graves and headstones are reminders of people who've died. Not all bodies are buried. Some are taken to the crematorium to be cremated or burned. When someone dies, the people who know them are very sad. They grieve and cry. The passing of time helps them feel better. So does remembering the person. Every week, Mr. Jivraj brings his children to say prayers at their mother's grave. 
عليهم غير المغزوب عليهم ولا الضالين. The children's mother died two years ago. They like to watch a video made when she was alive and talk about her. There's the sofa, which is in the sitting room. Yeah, she sits with a pillow. And there's a little pillow to show her back. When they do this, they remember happy times they had and how she loved and cared for them. Although their mother's no longer with them, she lives on in their memories. Even though people die, they leave behind them some things by which they'll be remembered. In this story, Badger's friends look back on all the things he's done for them, his parting gift. The following day, Badger's friends gathered anxiously outside Badger's door. They were worried because he hadn't come out to say good morning as he always did. Fox broke the sad news that Badger was dead and read Badger's note to them. It said simply, gone down the long tunnel. Bye bye, Badger. All the animals had loved Badger and everyone was very sad. Mole especially felt lost, alone, and desperately unhappy. In bed that night, Mole could think only of Badger. Tears rolled down his velvety nose, soaking the blankets he clung to for comfort. Outside, it began to snow. Winter had begun, and soon a thick layer of snow hid the animals' homes, where they would stay snug and warm during the cold months. The snow covered the countryside, but it didn't conceal the sadness that Badger's friends felt. Badger had always been there when anyone needed him. The animals all wondered what they would do now that he was gone. Badger had told them not to be unhappy, but it was hard not to be. As spring drew near, the animals often visited each other and talked about the days when Badger was alive. Mole was good at using scissors, and he told about the time Badger had taught him how to cut out chains of moles from a piece of folded paper. Paper moles had littered the ground that day. Mole remembered the joy he'd felt when he had finally succeeded in making a complete chain of moles with all the paws joined. Frog was an excellent skater. He recalled how Badger had helped him take his first slippery steps on the ice. Badger had gently guided him across the ice until he had gained enough confidence to glide out on his own. Fox remembered how, when he was a young cub, he could never knot his tie properly until Badger showed him how. Starting with the wide end of the tie, it's right over left, once around to the back, up, then down through the crossover, and holding the back of the tie, push the knot up to the neck. Fox could now tie every knot ever invented, and some he'd made up himself. And of course, his own necktie was always perfectly knotted. Badger had given Mrs. Rabbit his special recipe for gingerbread and had shown her how to bake gingerbread rabbits. Mrs. Rabbit was well known throughout the countryside for her excellent cooking. As she talked about her first cooking lesson with Badger so long ago, she could almost smell the wonderful fragrance of gingerbread fresh from the oven. Each of the animals had a special memory of Badger something he had taught them that they could do now extremely well. He had given them each a parting gift to treasure always. Using these gifts, they would be able to help each other. As the last of the snow melted, so did the animal's sadness. Whenever Badger's name was mentioned, someone remembered another story that made them all smile. One warm spring day, as Mole was walking on the hillside where he'd last seen Badger, he wanted to thank his friend for his parting gift. Thank you, Badger, he said softly, believing that Badger would hear him. 
And somehow, Badger did. Make sure that you get rid of any germs that are on your hand. 